yes, I have, I have definitely, definitely felt constrained in being able to express myself um, with my hair because of my profession. So for example, when I was qualifying, I had dead straight Eurocentric hair because I was mindful that it would be more difficult for me to secure employment as a barrister, particularly doing something, I, I do commercial and civil work, which isn't a type of work that a lot of ethnic minorities do. Um, so you're going into a world where you are already quite extraordinary, so you want to try and conform, and as such I felt I needed to conform with my hair because people feel that my natural hair as it grows out of my head is not professional, even though that's just inherent to who I am as a black woman, it's viewed as something as, as unprofessional, so, so it's a step-by-step a -step process breaking down barriers and being able to express myself how I want to, but yeah, work has definitely constrained my, my self-expression with respect to my hair. I was in the Caribbean, I was in Barbados, um, and I looked around at all of the, the people, my family's from St Vincent and the Grenadines, which isn't too far from Barbados, and how beautiful they looked and how comfortable the women were with their hair and how they looked and it just struck me that I'd grown up in an environment where I hadn't been comfortable with the totality of myself, um, particularly with my hair, that I didn't feel beautiful um, with my own natural hair and I just decided actively to change my mindset and I wanted to embrace every aspect of my blackness as it were. I didn't have any troubles per se. Um, when I went into my new work environment with my hair, but certainly my family, some of my family just thought, oh gosh, will this mar your career? Because, you know, you're going into the place with your like, Afro hair, they might think it's like a black power, like it's a political standpoint. You work in a conservative industry, will that mar your promotion and so forth? And that's not, those weren't considerations that arose through malice. These are genuine concerns because my family have been in this country for, for a while now and have seen that happen firsthand. When you're going in the Afro puff, it's probably less likely that you will progress in, in your career because the people who are making decisions look nothing like you. Um, so it's a bit of an affront to them to see this person embracing who they are, not conforming to the, the Eurocentric norm. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of people aren't very honest because there's all this sort of natural hair stuff going on. It's all fashionable, cool. Um, the first time I took my hair out and, the, you know, I had all the big curls or what have you, and I actually cried. I cried because I thought, oh my gosh, I look horrible. Because it was such a dramatic contrast to what I looked like before. It was almost like seeing a different person. People hadn't ever seen me with my hair like that before and I, I was quite distressed so it took a lot of time to build myself up sufficiently to think no no no, you look you look fine you look great look fine the way you are um, and to actually just get out the house with my hair sort of in full afro mode I had reactions of wonderment um, but lots of compliments and I started to attract sort of in, in romantic context, as it were, attract a completely different group of people, which is fascinating. You get people sort of coming up to you and be like, you know, oh, this is extraordinary, you're a very conscious woman. Ah, you know about yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did notice in the past few years that I've been black for a little while now. I think the real validation came from probably family. Um, I feel very fortunate to have a mum and a dad who have always sort of encouraged me to feel proud of who I am, feel comfortable in my skin, feel proud of my culture. So just having that baseline affirmation to start with, to know that the two people that created you think that they did quite a good job. And I know my dad is a big champion of natural hair. It was more when I went, when I was 16 and I started to straighten my hair that 
I sort of departed um, from that sort of natural ethos that I'd been brought up with because everyone around me, all of the images that I was bombarded with of people with straight hair, I was one of the only black girls at my school. Um, so you, you just, you want to, you want to fit in. You go to university, you want to fit in with everybody else. Um, so it's just coming full circle and realising it's a good thing to just embrace who you are and your uniqueness gives you uh, an advantage, as it were, sometimes over, over others and your culture is, is a blessing. Whoo! <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it's just a question of feeling too exposed. Um, and the reason I say that is because being growing up in Europe, in Western Europe, where I'm a minority, I already feel very exposed every day just by stepping into the room and being the only person on a regular basis that looks like me. So to shave off, it's almost like taking away a, a, a comfort blanket, taking away some protection so at least I can kind of semi use my hair to like shield my face from the world a little bit. Without any hair, shaving off, I'd have no shields. There's I'm just completely, completely exposed, wholly, wholly vulnerable. And I think that's quite, that's, that's intimidating. So it's a challenge as it is. Um, so I don't think I'm brave enough at this stage to just completely shave, shave my head. But I suspect I'd probably be overly reliant on makeup and stuff. I'd always be accessorising my face to compensate for the fact that I didn't have any hair left. At the junior end, where I'm at, at now, I'm not a decision maker. I'm not an influencer. Um, I'm not in a position to sort of set the proverbial standard. I'm not a judge, I'm not a QC. I can't do that right now. And I think it's, it's one of the reasons why I do work so hard and I do want to progress in my career to increase the diversity at the top and say, yeah, you can be who you are. The fact that I have my hair in a particular way does not impact upon my merit um, as a barrister. I can be just as articulate and put forward arguments that are just as cogent whether I have an afro puff or whether I have braids. It is of no import whatsoever. Um, as long as I'm smart and professional, um, that's, that's, that's the only thing that, that matters. So certainly I, I do think the amount of power um, you have is is absolutely fundamental to how much you are at liberty to express yourself because at the moment there are other people who are con in control of how much I can progress um, and what I can do and nine times out of ten or almost 99.9999 times out of ten they look nothing like me so I'm trying to remove as many barriers perceived or actual um, in our communications that I can make that, that progress. So yeah, definitely, power is key. I'm now in a place where I, I adore my hair, I like it, I appreciate its versatility. I wouldn't have any other type of hair in the world. Um, I like exactly what I have on my head and it's taken me well over 20 years, well over 20 years to get to that place where I actually like more or less what I look like and, and what sprouts out of my head on a relatively regular basis.